All right, so now the case is starting to wrap up on the state side, and it'll begin on the defenses starting Monday. And I thought that Borton was gonna testify against Melly just to save his own ass, but we see that that ain't gonna happen, and we see where he'll stand there with it when it come his trial date in October. They're still looking at this video of them leaving the studio, walking out to the cars, getting ready to leave. And they're really focusing in on Melly carrying this satchel bag that they're suspecting that had the murder weapon in it that he was walking to the car with. And the person that I believe that sat in the front that is deceased, they had a satchel bag that they was walking with as well, but neither one was the person that's deceased or Melly's satchel bag confiscated or seized when the car was seized when Borland took the bodies to the hospital. So where was Millie at during that time and when they took the bodies to the hospital and where was the satchel bags? Either one of them. Now the lead detective, he takes the stand that was on the crime scene and he gives this image of where the crime scene was and kind of like a point to point of where about 830 some foot of where they found the shell casings. Now he also exposes the text messages between Millie and Sack Chaser that was going on around the times leading up to the crime scene. And this is what I wanna to say too, guys, y'all young boys, listen. Whether you're in jail or you're not in jail, you really need to be careful about what you're saying on these phones because even if you talk in code, don't even talk in code because they have people just like they had the gang unit specialists to come on the stand and testify. They have people like him and they have informants that are amongst all these different crimes and street people and gangs and stuff that can decode this language and talk they even on your social media sites as well they monitoring and getting the knowledge of different code talk so when it ever comes a time that they need to decode information they can and they will so in Melly's case this is the reason why i'm saying this Melly on the jail phone he on the jail phone and you know when you a person get a call from the jail phone to tell you when you answer hey this call is from so-and-so county jail and this may be monitored for so-and-so shared pur purposes so you know this because it's telling you and he's on the jail phone telling his mom that to unlock the phone and he's giving her the code for his manager to get some information so what you think they was doing listening the whole time and that really establishes in the state's case that this is Melly's phone because he's on the jail phone and it's recorded that he's giving his mom the passcode to the phone and unlocking it not only does it establish that it's his phone but it also established that it's the beef that we're looking at in the text messages between y'all that runs concurrent up to the times that when they were murdered and when you look at these text messages, you will see that there was obviously the dispute that was going on between them. And you can see and kind of tell that it seemed like Melly's trying to calm him down over the situation that he mad about. So this is Melly text messages between him and Sack Chaser. And it's Sack Chaser in the blue and Melly in the green. And Sack Chaser, he says, oh yeah, and I meant to tell you, I told you before we went to Cali that me and Juvie, CEO, peso the artist because you be moving on this music just because you first to pop ain't finna be looking confused all my life y'all really my artist you ain't doing that part right so that's obviously a misunderstanding or a dispute of i'm assuming that melly is moving in a business way like he's the ceo and he the artist based off of what sack chaser is saying right now then he says, I get these niggas right. Y'all ain't finna just keep saying that y'all be on some lifestyle shit. Just can't say they're your artists just to look good. Do the same shit I be doing. I'm just under you cause I let you be the face, but I'm a CEO. And then he also goes on to say, I'm good. It just be some telling me y'all up to something. You don't owe me nothing. We is the same person. But how you let this shit keep going this far? What if it was the other way around? My mom wouldn't do no shit like this. So, Sack Chaser must feel like he getting fucked over in some kind of way as far as the business side. 
And what is Melly's mom doing to for him to throw her in the equation as far as the situation? Because obviously it may be she may be acting in his role, you know, and leaving them out of the cut. I mean, I don't know. Maybe y'all do. But also he goes on to say too. He says, I'm booling. I ain't say I was beefing with you, but before I let something happen to me or play with my family, everybody will die. Shit like that, duck with my blood. Boy, these boys in this damn gang talk. But he's basically saying, uh, you know, he talking about, you know, before he let anything happen to him, you know, he gonna rock out. So let's see what Melly had to say. I don't consider her my mama no more. Fuck that bitch, bruh. I know, I feel you. That that shit weird, bro. So Melly, he come back and basically disowning his own mom. Uh, you know, calling her a, a bitch and basically kind of going in favor. And it's really weird to me because usually if you have a person that so called you into it with or you got beef with and you respond in that kind of manners, it's you kind of like I don't know if he's saying that to be for real. Or if he's saying it in a way of, you know, kind of coaxing him to make him feel comfortable with him. So let's keep reading. So, Sack Chaser, he replies, he says, then she keep calling. Well, it says, then she keep telling people shit about me and I'm not even worried about her, bro. I'm trying to boo, do me. Why motherfuckers always worry about me and what the fuck you talking about? How you gonna leave and we can't even get in the gate without you be on some brazy shit. And says, like, I don't even be knowing what the fuck to say no more. She do shit out the blue. She be on some brazy. I don't got shit to do with no more with her no more if y'all kill her fuck that bruh and she ain't my mama no more like so yeah the question to me is you know i mean you know you gotta be a a, a really cold individual you feel what i'm saying to even say something like that about your mom let alone to say that he wouldn't even care that if they killed her you know that's kind of sick and you know it kind of raises the question to the state of okay all right so if you'll say that you wouldn't care if they killed your own mom who's to say that you would care if you killed them so after reading and hearing these messages did he really do it i mean it kind of sounds like it but i'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all just for my opinion i don't feel like the boy got it in him to do it i just don't see it I just don't see it. Little old dude like that, man. I mean, and I could be very wrong. You know, you don't you don't judge a book by its cover. But I'm just saying, I just don't see it. Him him doing it. I don't. I don't. I don't even believe he got it in him. You know, y'all can let the lyrics and all this different kind of stuff fool y'all. Now, you know, most rappers they usually be lying. Okay, nine nine ninety five percent of them be lying about their stuff they talking about, and it's usually the guys in their crew or guys in their neighborhood or guys that they once knew. Is really doing the stuff they talking about. So, I mean, I just, I don't know, y'all. I don't think he, he did it, but, you know, it's all pointing toward him. It's all pointing toward him. And I feel like for him to take their lives over a situation that's as simple as this, of what it seemed like it is, just a money dispute, or uh, maybe it was positions or, Somebody doing whatever they're supposed to do as far as they roll, you know, I feel like all of that could have been very well disputed, you know, just taken care of, you know, especially if it was money. The dude was very well on his way to making multi-million dollars a year. You know, I don't see it being justifiable of him taking his friends, people that he's known reportedly through middle school, high school, all the way up until now, you know, maybe even earlier, for him to do such a thing. You know, these folks know each other. You know, folks know folks, you know, so I'm pretty sure that this is, you know, it's really hard on his mom as well as uh, the uh, the guys that are deceased, their family members. You know, this is a this really tough case, y'all, emotionally for them. You know, I can only, you know, imagine, but I just don't see it being justifiable as far as him doing something like that. Now, somebody definitely did it. It's either one of the two or both. 
and I think both of them gonna wear that jacket. Like I say, Boylan, he he didn't already, you know, waived his he didn't gave his chances up without with by not testifying with the state against Melly to save himself in this this trial. When his trial come up, he won't have the option to say that oh Melly did it, and if if Melly gets acquitted, you know, or if they do convict Melly of the murders, he gonna go too. You're an accessory because you are basically you're arboring or you well i don't even know if it's arboring but you're like you're you're putting the front up to to uh orchestrate this crime you're covering for your co-defendant basically so yeah it's no different than the charleston white case when charleston white talked about how him and his friends uh murdered this white man well he not him and his friends but where well, they was there together all witnessing and doing the act you know his friends actually did the act but he was there during the crime so he did time just like they did you know it's the same situation just about you know they're gonna both they're gonna both wear that jacket and rock that boat they both going in my eyes state not the state but the defense on melly's behalf they're gonna present their case you know they're gonna come with their own uh medical examiners and um reconstruction experts hopefully and uh they may they may call just to maybe possibly make a difference they may call melly's mom to the stand uh they may call some other possible witnesses and they actually had one dude who actually claimed that he was the person who did the murders but he instantly got threw out because he was in jail when the murders purportedly had happened so he was just lying <laughs> you know what i'm saying so uh I doubt that they um, they put Melly on the stand. You know, that'll be crucifixional. They just, they'll crucify him as far as the cross-examination on the stand, as far as asking him questions, you know. Um, there's so much that could be asked to nail him to the cross, y'all, figuratively, literally, too. But, uh, nah, they, I don't see him testifying. Not, not, not one bit, nah. So, uh, this case is almost wrapping up, y'all. The defense, they gonna come with their stuff Monday. So, uh, Stay tuned, man. Make sure y'all like, share, subscribe. I'll catch y'all on the next one, bro.